You are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAC Radio. Welcome to the Bitter Medicine Podcast, where it's all about black empowerment. Our show focuses on black news and entertainment, arts, science, economics, history, people, and strategies that uplift, empower, and motivate Africans within the diaspora. And now, your host, whose favorite color is black, Goku. Welcome back to the Bitter Medicine Podcast. This is your host, Koku. Uh, today's show should be a good one. I, I really uh, appreciate the guest speaker that we're going to have on today from African Blood Siblings. We're going to discuss uh, his book, The Pro-Black Compendium. Uh, the Pro-Black Compendium is a resource guide written by a longtime organizer for the purpose of its reader gaining clarity and insights into how to seek and develop African consciousness for themselves and their brothers and sisters. The book elaborates on numerous activities, ancestors, books and films for African development, and includes several hundred curated proverbs and quotations that have been used with great success by the author and our ancestors. The book also discusses warriors, warrior queen mothers, wars and civilizations, with immense instruction. For example, what can we learn from Hannibal? What can we learn from Dahia al Kahini? What can we learn from the Second Intermediate Period? What can we learn from the Ma Federation? These questions and more are answered succinctly, yet astutely, to provide those Africans willing to make a change to know what is and what needs to be changed. If you want to find out more about this book, continue to listen as I introduce my guest, Oni. Oni, are you there? Yes. Hotep, brother. Hotep to you, too. Glad to have you on. As you heard, I just laid out the summary, if you will, of your book. Um, But before we get into the book, Oni, can you tell us who you are? Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Introduce yourself to the listeners. Okay, my name is... uh... Oni Tase, uh, Kumat. I am an author and an organizer. And uh, I, I founded the African Blood Siblings. And our mission is to build uh, prosperous, independent African communities. Thank you very much. So um, let's uh, get into... The book, if if you if you will, um, the pro black compendium. What led you to that title? What led me? Well, I really wanted to say the Pan African, uh, you know, handbook or something, but I realized, uh, like realistically, our people are our people. Like we we have to meet people where they are, mm. and. I realize that a lot of us want to be Mm pro-black, but we don't know what it means to be pro-black. And while being a pan-African nationalist is the ideal for being pro-black, the reality is that if if you don't know to, if you don't know step seven, right, then you're not going to just seek step seven openly. True. You know, So, so step one is be pro black, and and so I, I said the title of the book is going to be, you know, for step one, but it's going to lead you to step seven. Nice. For those of you who do, who are not aware, uh, the title being the pro black compendium. Compendium means that it's a collection of uh, very clear, very concise, very detailed uh, information about a particular subject. So this book is about being. Uh, providing you detailed information in a concise manner about being pro-black. And that's something that we really need. And I like how you broke it down, Oni, that um, a lot of people don't quite understand Pan-Africanism, but they, I guess they better understand pro-blackness, right? Exactly. 
and I and, uh -huh, go ahead. And and it's, and it's because of that. It's like you want to reach. See, a lot of people. It's between reaching uh, the few that are awake or some or the few that are or the many that are asleep. Mm. So, this book is really about reaching, uh, like 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 both groups, if you will. I you see. know, because the, the trouble that we have as a people is that the few that are awake aren't that awake. Mm. You know, and and because we're not because like, because the few that are awake aren't that awake, it's like everybody is pretty much like like everybody might as well be sleeping. Wow, that's you said something deep just now. The few that are awake aren't very awake. Can you elaborate on that just a little bit? That that's a very interesting statement there. Let's hear more. Okay, so uh, what, so one of the articles inside of this uh, Pro Black Compendium is about the four stages of African consciousness. Uh, I decided that uh, I'm going to use. I'm going to use like like basically if you if you read uh, two thousand seasons you you, uh, you you pick up on one of the words that uh, the author uses which is uh, Ascari you know mm -hmm. so I would say that one of the lowest stages of African consciousness is is the Ascari stage you know and and the Ascari is like a it's an Arabic term for soldier but it's basically the what 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 Eurasian people use when Eurasian people use African people as soldiers, uh, they call them Askari. So it's like when we as a people when when, a, when one of our people are used against us, we call them Askari, mm. right? Uh, so then, late uh, a stage above that would be, you know, and that's where a lot of us find ourselves. Uh, we are like act an activist doesn't like I, the activist sometimes identifies with a certain group and and identifies with a certain tactic you know so you have like say your black lives matter you know they identify with uh you know like let's say black people uh, you know black like, not really like not just black people because you know uh, like black lives matter is a little more you know complex but but then they also have a tactic of you know political you know showing up at rallies and you know, make, making noise or whatever. Disruptive, yeah. Uh, and then, and then you have like other groups. You know, you have, uh, you know, like let's say the African Socialist Party, or you have whatever. But, but, but the main thing is that these are activist groups, and what they do is they they sometimes identify as black people, sometimes identify as African people, sometimes identify as women, sometimes identify as you know black men. Sometimes, but, but, but for the most part, they don't they don't necessarily grasp that. You know, we're just we just have to identify as African people, you know. Mm. And then when it comes to the tactics, there's sometimes their tactics are militant. Most of the times, their tactics are pacifist, you know. Yeah. But then we go beyond that stage, and that's the astute stage, and that's where a lot of our, you know, a lot of people we call, you know, warriors, you know, are in this astute stage, you know, in this stage. And yeah, I'm abusing the letter A, but <laughs> the, the astute stage is is like the people who they they, they figure, hey, look, we're African people. And we're at war, but on the real, are they at war? You know. Yeah. Uh, you can hear them speak, but then, you know, they're not necessarily warriors per se, right? So of course, the the, the next stage would be uh, the the Ancovia, and the Ancovia is a, a term that I heard. It's a tw it's a tweet term. Was that was written inside of uh, Yurugu by I remember Ani. That term basically means those individuals who are leading in battle, right? Mm -hmm. And so that is the stage that the awakened people should be. But we find a lot of awakened people being at the astute stage. You know, mm. they 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 claim that there's a war going on, but but they're not fighting in this war. Right. Mm. And because they're not fighting in this war, it's like, what's the point of being awake? You know, the, the, the activists, you know, like like the Black Lives Matter person might look at this, you know, uh, awakened. Uh, it's awakened, astute person and be and say, OK, so why is why is being awake better than what I'm doing? Mm. You know, and it's like real talk. If you're in the middle of a war 
and all you're doing is saying uh, we're at war, right? But but you're not doing anything. It's like, well, so what? Right. You get what I'm saying? Right, right. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I know fully. Uh, actually, on Facebook, I'm a I'm a part of a few different conscious black groups, and all day people are saying, "Hey, we're at war. We're at war." And then when I make a call out to people to be podcasters on my network or to be bloggers on my blog site, which I'm going to talk to you about off air later, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, no one ever steps up because there's different ways to fight, right? And yeah. a lot of times, in, in most fights, in most big wars, is you have to have your your voices that, you know, that might spread propaganda for, for you or what exactly. have you. But a lot of people, when I try to get them to be a voice, not just be a keyboard warrior on a Facebook group and just posting memes exactly. all day, but actually speaking, lending their voice to the fight with me on my network, uh, a lot of people, most people never respond. Yeah, exactly. So, and, 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 and that's the reason, that's because, and, and that, that's partly why I wrote this book, because I said to myself, you know, we don't have the, the, the vision, we don't have the, the, the wherewithal, the reasoning behind why it's a war and why it needs to be war. You know, why, why it requires you to be active, you know? Uh, like, like just, to, just to pan out, what, one, of the, one of the things I say about this book is that it's an activity guide, you yes. know? That that it's not just because a lot of people, a lot of people sometimes like a lot of people who are, let's say, genuine say, "What can I do? You know, what where can I start?" Mm-hmm. And so, you know, as an organizer, you know, I've heard this many times, or or, or people have asked me, "What should I read?" Or, or or what should I watch? Or or how do I how do I how do I get the people activated? If you will, how do I get the people active? And it's like this is why I wrote this, you know, so that our people. You know, move away from the keyboard warriors. Move away from the rally goers. Move away from, you know, making false requests for for things that are not going to happen. You know, you know, be, be, move away from all that yeah. and become, you know, active leaders, if you will. So you know? the the Bitter Medicine podcast, which you're on right now, we have a companion blog site called Bitter Medicine Blogs at www. Blogs.com. And mm-hmm. something I tried to initiate a year or two ago was the Bitter Medicine Book Club as a yeah. part of the blog site. And, you know, one or two people joined in. Um, I tried to follow the, the books that the Black Panthers used in their book club. Oh, I see. And one or two people joined in, but now I'm, I'm really set to to restart the book club and I want to use your book as a jump off point. So I want to use this podcast as a way to intrigue people into purchasing your book and using it as the lesson plan that you intended it to be. Yeah. Thank you, brother. No no problem. So later on, before we leave, you're going to tell everyone where they can find your book. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay. So in your book, the pro black compendium, only you talk about politics, you talk about economics, you talk about culture, ethics, sociology, ecology, psychology, ideology. I mean, I could see why it's an eight-week program, because you are s- discussing all facets, all facets of black life, and we know that the system of white supremacy, although I kind of hate that term, to be honest, but as yeah, it stands... I- the system of white inferiority is attacking us on all levels of life, all aspects of our lives, including the ones that you have as chapters in your book. Can you just tell us a little bit about each? Like, in politics, um, I noticed in that chapter you talked about the lynching of a black man and how a white guy called it a barbecue in a letter to his mother. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's the thing with these. So that section, right, is uh, this eight-week program that, like I said, it's supposed to be an activity guide. So 
I in, I invite people like like once upon a time I invited people to sit around, you know, and read one quote, right? Discuss it, open up the floor for discussion, then pass on to the next quote, read that one, uh, and open it up for discussion, and and you know each of them would be done in a week, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so, so for for instance, for politics, you know, the idea was to communicate what is the political situation that Black people have when we don't have no when another people have power when other people have power right right and 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 we don't have as much power right you know? so so the situation would be you know like like you say Jesse Jesse Washington being lynched and and fifteen thousand white people watching him get beaten, castrated, and burned alive. I was, and, and saying, hey, this is a barbecue. I was staggered you know? by that number. 15,000 people exactly. witnessed that? You can't get 15,000 uh, black people into, uh, into a sports game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, 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 but they can get 15,000 white people to watch a black person get beaten, castrated, and burned alive. Wow. And, and we have to remember that at these lynchings, they would like cut off our, you know, cut off the penis of you know, whoever was lynched and yeah. like distributing yes yes and and so so there's a lot of things that uh you know a a, a lot of the focus for for for, for me in a, in a political sense is you know who what does peace look like for us as a people when we don't have as much power as another people or mm. the people that we're at war with mm. you know so so and and that's really what what the what what, what the end of it is you in that in that same chapter you you mention a Kwame Touré quote that um, who was uh, also formerly known as Stokely Carmichael and Stokely Carmichael Kwame Touré he spoke about um, inferiority versus being well organized. Can you talk about that? Because that's a very that's a very strong concept there inferiority people call black folks inferior but are we really inferior can you elaborate on that oh well that that's the thing black people are definitely not inferior you mm-hmm. know white people know this everyone knows this the only thing is that what, what, what it, it, like i said it comes back to war you know well, one of the proverbs later on is uh the key to all pounds is the problem of consciousness and this is one of the proverbs that you can find on the walls of comet you know mm. uh people say comet comet you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but on the walls, you, you 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 can see this proverb, and what it tells you is that for any problem that you have, uh, consciousness is 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 the problem. Like consciousness is the is the key to solving that problem. So uh, one one of the one of the uh, things that I, I read inside of Ennis Wilson's Blueprint for Black Power was uh, he, he said that there's a Multiple personal, multiple personality disorder, mm-hmm. right? That a person with multiple personality disorder can have uh, what you call allergies. Can have allergies depending on what personality they have, mm. right? So as to say that you know, if, let's say you know you have nine different personalities, right? Mm-hmm. One of them could be allergic to oranges, right, and literally swell up when they touch oranges, while another one wouldn't. Mm. And so what it tells you is that your consciousness is what gets you sick, if you will, or your consciousness is what gets you, it's like, it's like the root of your problems, yeah. right? That's why we have to elevate our consciousness. But, but one of the, and, and, you know, possessed, we have a Eurasian consciousness, but I say Eurasian, but Eurasian consciousness. But, but the, the, the thing is this, that in a war, like you said about propaganda earlier, in a war, the best thing for you to do, uh, like like let's say it's a white people, is it, you know if you're if you're a white person, is the best thing to do to a black people who you're at war with, is to give them a consciousness such that they don't want to be at war, hmm. you know. And so this whole idea of hey you are inferior people, or hey we have nuclear weapons, or hey we have way better military than you, or hey like all of that is to intimidate you to not fight. You know, because why would you fight something that's superior? You know, why why, why would you know if 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 you hear that a guy is uh 
you know, or like 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 you know, if you hear Mike Tyson, you know, in his heyday, or, or Muhammad Ali in his, in, in his heyday wanted to you know box with you, you know, you you can politely decline. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not you're not gonna go into that match. So it's like white people tell you this, hey, you're inferior in order to, uh, in order to intimidate you from even fighting. But going back to what Kwame Ture said, you know, it's not about whether they are superior or inferior or whatever. It's about them being better organized for the war at hand. Mm. You are dropping some powerful, powerful words right now. Um, I noticed this over the last few years. You'll go on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, and you'll see white folks making comments like, oh, you guys don't want to get into a race war. You know, we, exactly. we have, you know, we have too much going for us, plus you're a minority, which a lot of people are questioning if blacks in America are really the extent of a minority that it's said they are. Uh, but you're right. The tactic is to always make you a minority, always make exactly. you inferior, because I, I associate those two things together. When, when they say you're a minority, that means you're inferior. That means you're a loser. And I think a lot of people internalize these these concepts and it makes them stagnant and not willing to fight, not willing to raise themselves to a higher energy level. We talk a lot about low energy individuals on this show. And a lot of what's broadcasted as a propaganda scheme of black people is low energy individuals. They never present the high energy people. They only show you the people doing the base animalistic type stuff. And uh, it's a tactic. It's a tactic. It's, it's yeah. propaganda. Yeah. Uh, so, so in, in, the, in the back of this book, I have a glossary of terms, and uh, one of the terms I have is uh, propaganda, and, and it's one of the definitions that I really enjoy. It says propaganda is a war tactic to identify or misidentify a target's forces and enemies, thus creating or destroying a warrior consciousness and aiding or harming a war effort, you know? So it's like their whole goal is to harm your war effort, mm. you know? So it's like, yeah, they, 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 they tell you that you're inferior, you know, or, or they, or they give you, or, 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 or they dismiss all the uh, people who are doing on your behalf, or mm. they, 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 they show you, you know, Martin, show you Malcolm, but like, like they show you people who were killed right? You know, uh, to, to the point where you believe, you know, cause I remember when I was younger, I used to think, Hey, I wouldn't want to do anything political because I wouldn't want to be assassinated. Right. You know? Right. Of course, I grew out of that consciousness, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not looking to be assassinated, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm also, uh, by that, 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 that inhibition, if you go, or that, that, uh, that intimidation, right, you know? right. But yeah. at the same time, it's like they—they—that's—that's they, that's a, it's a war tactic. They're at war with us because, realistically speaking, if we had like like they don't want us to have power. You see, because 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 they know that we're superior. You right. Know? I, I remember uh, one of the phrases during uh, you know our enslavement here in. A, in, in America, was uh, give an N-word an L. No, give an N-word an inch, and he'll take an L, hmm. you know? And an and, and L, he was like, just, like, maybe, I, I can't remember exactly how big, but it was, it was much bigger than an inch, you know, maybe bigger than the feet, bigger than the foot. But the whole idea is that if you give a little to a black person, they'll make a lot out of it, right. you know? And so it's like, you don't say that of uh, inferior people. Yes, and if anything, you say that of, of a superior people, right? You know, um, but 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 that's just like one of many, you know, evidences. I mean, I mean, like, like like another evidence, obviously, is how if you look at the ancient world, you know, we were the the ones that were worshipped, you know, by all people. Yes, you know, so that's like, and you know, you don't worship, you know, that you know that we 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 are called the blameless Ethiopians. For a uh, reason. The high sold ones, mm-hmm. the uh, the the closest to the nature, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like that. That's what we are known as in the ancient world, you know. 
And and the thing is, I, I remember somebody telling me that one thing white people don't want to do is return to the caves. Mm. You know? Powerful. And and it's huh? Very powerful. It's so powerful that I, I mentioned on Facebook some weeks ago that you never hear white people even address the fact that they once came from caves. It's us who do it. Yeah, exactly. We, 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 because you know, because it, it, it doesn't help them. I, I, and and it's like I I, I keep because the thing is that we one thing that we don't get, and to a large degree, that's why I wrote this book is because one thing we don't get is that we are at war. You know, and it's like you can't you can't, and it's it's like you have to study war and know what war is to know to understand the situation that we're in. You know. And so the situation that we're in is such that white people are going to present themselves in such a way that is to confuse you and confuse your war effort. You know, you you can't like like uh, with the exception of certain channels, uh, you can't turn on the television and say to yourself, "Man, white people are savages." You know, you you, you know when you especially not like. Uh, let's say, you know, like like big Seinfeld and Friends and all that stuff. You're not gonna watch those shows and come away saying white people are unpleasant savages. We have to we have to win the war against them. Right. You know. Right. If anything, right. you know, you come from that show like, wow, those are some friendly, benevolent, you know, those are some nice people. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't mind drinking a beer with them. You know. Right. 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 And and it's like that's that's the propaganda because these are the same people. You know who who would watch you get lynched? These are the same people who would murder you, kill you, destroy you with with, with nothing. You know, with, 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 with just just because they, just because it's what they, they're it's a, they, you know it's war. Yeah, they know it's war. Yeah, but it's like we program so much propaganda coming at us that we like almost refuse to see it. You know. And and it's it's uh it, it's like we we need that clarity because it's like as soon as you understand that it's war, a lot of the stuff that we are doing wouldn't make sense anymore. You know, like like I said, like like I was watching the Black Lives Matter uh, video uh, where, where they go up on stage and they're talking, oh yeah, we're Americans and we're against the police. You know, we're well, we're against bad cops, uh, but we, we we like cops and we're bad. We're against bad cops and all that. All that nonsense is. You know, it's like it's like you don't understand that it's a war going on, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that all these the, all the white people that you hear that are doing good for them, you know, that 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 that, that, that so called would do good for black people, it's only because they're in power right now, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But 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 we have to go back to the historical record to see who they were before they had the power, right? You know, and 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 we also have to look at it today and say what are they doing to to to, to for, 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 for you to have power because see like i wrote i i, I sometimes I wrote, I wrote a few articles and one of the one one of, them, one of them that i wrote was that you you know white people would say we want to like fix the police blah, 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 police whatever the reality is that you only see black people following white laws you know, laws written by white people. Hmm. You only see black people following white police structures, you know, or white police officers, you know, That's you know, overseers point. or whatever, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that right there, you know, should tell you something because you don't see white people following uh, a black polit- police structure. You don't see white people following black laws. Have is, and and then, so you have black people saying police reform, whatever. But you see that as simply black people saying it's okay for white people to continue to have power over us. Yes. But 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 Marcus Garvey said it. Uh, you know the only protection against injustice, and this is not that's not my, this is not verbatim, but the only protection against injustice is power. Mm-hmm. You know, physical, financial, and scientific. You know, so it's like unless we have power, where we have to understand these people are at war with us, you know, from from the dawn of time, you know, from the dawn of their being, they were at war with us. Uh, and, and that's something that Keti the seventh uh, told his son, 
you know, he said, beware of these, uh, he's, he called them Asiatics. Well, that's the translation says Asiatics, but it's pretty much beware of these whites. Uh, they have been at war with us since the time of Heru, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, and, and he says, because they have miserable conditions, their, 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 their land is, you know, barren, it's a bunch of forest, it's a bunch of mountains, bad roads, all that stuff. So they've been at war with us since the time of Heru. And he's he's warning his son about this, and of course, you know, Kethi the seventh is from like, like five thousand years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he was saying that they never conquer, and they were never conquered. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Uh, but of course, we're living in a time where they conquered. Oni, um, and, and what are they doing with that power? But holding on to it. Oni, um, let's take a quick station ID break, and we'll be back at the top. Okay. You are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAC Radio. We're back now uh, speaking with the author of the Pro-Black Compendium. The brother's name is Oni. Uh, we just finished talking about war. We just finished talking about how pro-blacks aren't very awake. Uh, Oni, I want to talk about how we can fight back now. So we're still talking about war, but I want to talk about it from an economic standpoint. Can you talk to me about how it is black folks can fight back and win the war via economics? Basically, inside of the pro-black compendium, there are, in the eight-week program, there are, like, everything is written by African people with one exception, and that is the general rules of warfare. So the general rules of warfare are these, uh, is a list compiled by Machiavelli, Right? Because he wrote a book called The Art of War, and Sun Tzu wrote a book called The Art of War, but I haven't been able to uh, get my hands on a, a book called The Art of War or, or about The Art of War by an African author. Okay. But, but the generals of warfare are, are different than, like, say, Machiavelli's writings. Because in, in his writings, he's first writing an original treatise on, on, on warfare, but then he, he decides to stop, break away, and, and write out different uh like a proverb like quotes if you will about how to operate in war right and so one of the things with that is that uh though though the the list you know tells you something about warfare and i want i want to i want to i want to quote let's say two of them you know? oh. so mm-hmm. All right, so so one of the quotes would be, "Man is the prize of the soldier," right? And and the other one would be, "Men steal money and bread, are the sinews of war, but if these four, the first two are more necessary, for men and steel find money and bread, but money and bread do not find men and steel," you know. So one of the issues that we have as a people is that, like I said, if if we don't get that it's war, we we don't get a we don't get a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, like I said, like if you're a rich man, it doesn't matter if you're a rich man. You know, if you're unarmed and you're a rich man, uh, as as uh, Huey Newton said, you know, any unarmed people are either enslaved. Or can be enslaved at any moment, right? You know, and then when it comes to the other one, men and steel, money and bread, you know, these these are these are what you need for war. But men and steel find money and bread. Money and bread do not find men and steel. Mm-hmm. You see, so it's like you can't go. You know, no matter what, how much money you have, you can't buy what you need from the white man t- to take out the white man. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, and, and, and not only that, but you can't even find the men to, 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 to do what we need to do. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But, but, so it's like, we are the people, we're put on that money consciousness, you know? And, and a part of that money consciousness is in order that g- give you the inferiority. Because the reality is the white man's going to have more money than you because he prints it. 
you know? Like, mm-hmm. uh, and, and it's like, and, and, a re- and another reality is this, that the money that he has is going to go back to him, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, one of the quotes I have inside of uh, the, the book that's more of an original quote is, uh, like, whoever controls the currency controls the commerce. Right. You know? Because at the end of the day, let, let's be realistic. If if I give you, let's say if I have a currency of uh, uh, calorie shells, right? Mm-hmm. And I tell you, I tell you now go into the market with these calorie shells, right? The reality is that if I pay you in these calorie shells, you're going to have to spend those calorie shells with whoever I approve the wh- whoever whoever's in my network right you get what i'm saying so mm-hmm. it's like money i mean or the dollars if you will are are the currency that that's always going to have to circulate back to the white man its owner right exactly it's going to have to go back to him because that's the whole reason for him doing that you know mm-hmm. and 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 it's interesting because uh it's not even illegal to print your own currency, and it's not illegal to exchange uh, your own African currency. Mm. Uh, you know, it's not illegal to, to use Zimbabwe dollars here. You know, to, 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 to go to the smoothie shop, tell them here here's some Zimbabwe. You know, here's some money from Zimbabwe, and they say your money's good here. It's not it's not illegal or anything like that. Uh, not to say that you, you know you know you should worry about legality and illegality, but uh, but I'm just saying that. You know, the reality is that as long as we have this, this this money consciousness, at the end of the day, it's almost a losing battle, you know, mm. especially if we're not intelligent with it. Right. You know, uh, but we, because, because, you know, what, what, what are you going to do with a large sum of money anyway, but have to give it to them for something expensive, you know? So it means that we really need to just be producers, so if it's the case that we practice group economics, at the end of the day, if we're not producing anything, that money is going right back to white supremacy anyway. Exactly. And, 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 and you know, the, the, that's, that's the, the, the whole point of, exactly, that's the, the whole point of, of getting money is to give it back to this white man. The white man set up the, the, your commercial activity already. Right. You know what I mean? He 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 set it up already. It, it, he's not, you know, he's he's stupid, but he's not that stupid. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, you know, he he he's not he's not as smart as you know, but he's not like an idiot. Right. He, he understands. He 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 understands. He understands how to control you. You know, with strength. So you know? so money. So, okay, so we need to lose the money consciousness to a certain degree, is what you're saying. To a certain degree, you know? And, and, and that was actually another thing, another issue, that, another thing I wanted to speak about, which is uh, I wrote a, I originally wrote another book called Zubiri and the Maroons of Ma'a, right? And in that book, I discuss what it's like to, or I, I, I delve into what it's like to be uh, in a prosperous, independent African community. You know what it's like to be an African man, uh, or, or or even to observe an African woman. To to, to 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 you know, African women are in the story as well, and but it's a short fictional novel that goes straight to the point, you know, and 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 one of the things is that it might be too short because you know, it doesn't come up to too many pages, right? Okay. But but at the same time, it's it's packed with what it looks like, uh, what, what say a black economics would be. You know, we could have our own currency, our own bazaar, our own productivity, you know, and and we could work for our people and have a roof over our head and have the surplus going to our government, if you will. You know, our own government. Right. Right. And our own government, you know, protecting us, you know, genuinely, truly. You know, being on the forefront of technology, being being on the you know, being an advanced people, right? But uh, we don't have that, mm-hmm. so it's like when we do have money, we're not necessarily 
investing in any sort of independent African government, independent African protection, independent African healing, independent, you know, so it's like, you know, of course, you know, I mean, I'm not saying, I, I mean, money is a complicated issue, you know, because it's like, as long as we don't have that independence, then, you know, if you don't have independence, you have dependence. So, of course, no one's saying, you know, in a situation of dependence, uh, you know, you know, die. Because the thing is that the white man set it up such that, uh, you know, like no animal in order to survive in, in, in his world, you have to either work for him or find some way to make money. You know, yes, but 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 so it's like money for survival, obviously. But 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 the reality is that if we're not like 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 this, it, it, it's uh one of the reasons why I say politics, economics, and culture is because of something that Letter Jeffrey shared, which was the uh, but basically that politics, economics, and culture go go together. So it's like if your economics are not supporting your culture and your politics. Right. So so that's to say your own self-government and your own and, 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 and reinforcing your own value system, if you will. Right. If your economics is not doing that, then there's no point. You know? Yes. Uh, it, it's, like, it's like like I said, you know, like I said to other people, you know, like that classic example of economics without culture or politics is, you know, you can make a fortune selling a cream or something. But obviously, you're doing your people a horrible, you know, a horrible injustice. So let's you know? um, let's uh, let's shift to culture. What's wrong with um, cu- what's wrong with I guess I should say black culture as it stands today? How does it differ from ancient African culture? Because your book delves into that a little bit too, doesn't it? Oh yeah, the the the. the the, the, the differences are phenomenal. Uh, the, the the culture that we see today is is really uh, a Eurasian culture, you know, particularly uh, like a white culture. You know, uh, what what you what we see today is what, what what I like to call Occidentalism or like Western like the Westernization of of black people. Mm-hmm. Uh, black. Like, like, basically, white people are incredibly violent toward black people, incredibly degrading towards black people, uh, and and then so what you what we call black culture today is pretty much, you know, that same violence and degradation, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. or, or, or 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 I mean, and other people will tell you about you know, let's say soul food, uh, being, like, you know, the the the, the, the well, I mean, some parts of soul food is obviously. You know, food that we, you know, food traditions we we took from Africa. Yes. But other parts, you know, like eating like intestines or something. Right. Is is, is more so like you know getting the bare minimum and getting like nothing. Right. Right. You know, and and having to, you know, and having to deal with that. You know, so it's like, uh, as far as far as black culture, it's, it's really like like what what white people are a tribalistic people. You know, uh, some would say that. Like they've always been at war with us, but they've also always been at war with themselves. You know, mm-hmm. uh, one of the terms that they use about their ancient culture, the white man's ancient culture, is the battle axe culture. You know, so basically it's just white people exercising brutalities upon brutalities upon upon themselves. Mm. You know, uh, and and actually one of the things that I, I relate to in the book is 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 uh, the the legend of uh, Ram, who's this. Uh, white man from way back who who visited you know one of the black cities uh saw black people were organized and went back to his white people and said let's stop fighting amongst ourselves let's start fighting these white people and that was and then he led the invasion of the uh of india you know the indus valley civilization Mm. and so but but that right there was like considered the great war and that was one of the wars that tipped away, you know, let's say black supremacy or tipped away, you know, black power mm. and, and, and led to this white power that we're living under, you know. And this was like 5,000 years ago. But, but the whole idea is that white people fight amongst themselves. That's, that, that's them, you know, mm-hmm. because, you know, maybe because of their, their terrible situation. 
but they but the, what, what we see amongst ourselves is pretty much like that emulation imitation of that cutthroat individualism but but that's not who we are you know tell us a little bit I, more H-I-P. tell us a little bit huh? more tell us a little bit more about who we were then Exactly. So ancient African uh, culture is not about, it's not individualistic. It's not about the individual, you know? Uh, you can pick, we can pick that up by uh, looking at like all the advanced mathematics that we had, all the advanced building architecture. A lot of the stuff aren't attributed to any one individual, you know? Like with the exception of Imhotep, for instance, like, 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 like we see the African proverbs, we don't know who said it. Mm-hmm. You know, it, but 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 a lot of stuff were just attributed to to Hudi, you know, or thought, or or you know, the, like the the ancient, you know, you know, the different different na- ways to say his name. But but the whole idea is that uh, we just attribute it to the nature, the nature, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like, but 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 on the other hand, it's it, it's to a large extent we. You know, we were we we were considered the blameless, the high soul, the 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 like just the beautiful. You right, know, right. Uh, one of the one of the one of the, one of the stories I can relate is uh, the story of I believe it was Pianke, right? Pianke, uh, and uh, I, I can actually I, I put a little bit of him in the book because I said to myself uh, that was one of those. Uh, his great brother. So, so here's what happens inside of uh, Kemet. You know, uh, Pianke is a, a Kenesu king who uh, liberated Kemet. You know, at Kemet's request. So, so basically, Kemet says uh, that, that they're having trouble with uh, the Eurasian invaders, right? So mm-hmm. they request for their their southern neighbor. You know, Kenesu. Some people call it Kush uh, or Ethiopia or, or wherever. But, but. They request from Kenesu to come in and 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 uh, and push out these invaders, right? So Pianke comes in and he, he doesn't destroy anything while he's invading. He doesn't loot anything when he's invading. You know, he he only fights to protect the ancient ways, and was, and he even when he's there, he restores temples and buildings, and he builds new ones after his victories. You know. And uh, as they march through, right, he, he, his, his preference is to avoid fighting anyone, right? So he, he offers them uh, terms of peace, you know, favorable terms for peace. And if people don't, uh, if people reject it, then he fights them. But otherwise, he, he, he accepts it, you know? Okay. And, and after his victories, he doesn't leave behind towns and ruins or burn crops. You know, he even spares his rival. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So as to say that, uh, th- this is who we, we, we we're just good people, and 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 the thing that we have to pick up on, uh, like 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 we want to know what it is to be like African, if you will, but but we have to understand like who we aren't in order to understand who we are, you know, in the sense of this that when you look at uh, let's say European history, right. You see that they don't have any civilization until they have African contact. You know, mm-hmm. I'd say mm-hmm. that their earliest civilization, quote unquote, would be uh, the ancient Greeks, right? But they had to come from the Minoans. You get what I'm saying? Right. But before that, they were just killing each other. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. And then after Rome falls, you have this long standing dark ages, right? But you have Africans ruling in the Iberian Peninsula, you mm-hmm. know, Spain and Portugal, mm-hmm. you know, they call the Moors and the Moors, the Moors, they are, they're, they're ruling in the Iberian Peninsula for like 700 years. But during this time, there's nothing going on with white people. But then suddenly the Renaissance, suddenly an ability to navigate across the globe. Uh, but, 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 but it's not, it's not really suddenly. It's just the reality that they're taking from we there in the Iberian Peninsula. Right. You know? So, so it's like, when, when, when you talk about, when you discuss what, what African culture is, it is, it is pretty much that, 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 that what we know, what we like about, civ- what quote unquote, civilization, 
is what they took from us. See what I'm saying? So the arts, the sciences, the mathematics, the the you know chemistry, you know chemistry, you know, right, right. Uh, all all of that is is who we were, who we are. You know, the only thing that they did was they, uh, you know, they violently took it from us, repackaged and then it, put their names on it. Yeah. And, and and then then they add this extra violence component, extra brutality component that that we don't necessarily identify with, uh, in, in in a sense, but but also, uh, especially particularly the brutality of it, you know. Mm-hmm. But 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 in a sense, we have to realize too, and this is something that I think that we don't uh, we we tend to forget, and that we as a people have to have. Uh, you know, we, like I said, we're at war. We have to have warlike tendencies. We have to have military supremacy again. You see, mm-hmm. because we come from a, a people who once had military supremacy. Right. You know, you couldn't just march up. Uh, you, 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 you know, uh, the uh, the Eurasians invaded Kemet, took it over, and then the, the Southern Kushites had to push the uh, invaders out. But the reason why the invaders took over Kemet was because they had military supremacy. You see, right? And then, and then you go back to uh, Kemet. I mean, you go back to Kenesu. The first kingdom was Tasedi. It's called the land of the bow. You know, and the land of the bow means means the land of military supremacy. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You so, hear me? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's a lot to kind of unpackage. I mean. You're correct in that we had military supremacy. What will it take now to return to that military supremacy? Does it take a a complete shift in culture paradigm or ethics or ideology or all of the above? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a it's a complicated question. You know, obviously, you know, obviously, not something to you know, I'm not something to discuss openly per se. Right. But also, we we as a people, we, you know, like I said, it, it starts with, it starts with just getting the warrior consciousness back. Okay. You know, so that, that's why, like, like I said, that's why I wrote this book. Right. So that we can we can come back to that warrior consciousness. So you know, so and come back to that charity. So um, you're right. Let's not discuss certain things openly, um, but let's talk about the warrior consciousness. In your book, you talk about um, the ten warrior queen mothers and yes. the ten warrior kings. Can you tell us, you don't have to tell us all ten for each, but can you just uh, let us know about some that might not be too familiar to most black people? Okay, so one of them I, I, I'm, I'm interested in is... Uh uh Masinisa. Uh Masinisa is uh very interesting. So so I call him a uh, Askari. You know, so like, like I said, the Askari are the, the, the soldiers for Asians. You right. know? Mm-hmm. So so him and I also I want to add Shaka Zulu to that list of Askari, but 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 Masinisa is kind of almost like a race traitor. You know, but his story is really interesting. You know, mm-hmm. because essentially Carthage, uh, Carthage and Rome are at war, right? But Masinissa studies in he's like from Namibia, uh, but he, he's he's uh, he, he's like a neighbor to Carthage. But uh, he's interested in Hannibal's niece. But uh, like like another African king. Uh, is uh, you know, has an interest in the niece as well. So Carthage diplomatically uh, gives that niece to the other the other African king, okay. right? So this irritates uh, Masinissa to say, to say the least, and he pledges his loyalty to Rome. Mm, so okay, what's interesting is that uh, Rome then, you know. Commands an army. Oh, Masinissa commands like a Roman army into uh, the African kingdom where his uh, his uh, his his would be queen is. Right, he goes inside and 
you know, destroys that, you know, destroys, you know, w- wins the war against that kingdom. But Rome says, hey, you're going to have to give us the woman because now she's a prize of Rome. So instead of doing that, he has the woman commit suicide, right? So he doesn't get her. Okay. And instead, he's, he's so angry at, for some reason, he's angry at uh, Carthage over this. And he ends up fighting against Carthage, even though Hannibal is saying, come fight with me. You know, you know come, come to our side. So at the end of the day, you know, he does some dirty tactics you know, against the Carthage and has Hannibal come back. And then it's him who tips the balance of, you know, like basically Hannibal's destroying Rome. Mm-hmm. He's at the gates of Rome. He's doing these brilliant military tactics. But it's because of Masinissa screwing around and, you know, being a race trader effectively uh, that Hannibal comes back and then Hannibal loses that war, mm-hmm. right? And in losing that war against Masinissa, pretty much, right? You know, Hannibal is eventually destroyed uh, years later. You know, you know, Romans would say, like, like a particular Roman senator would always start off or end off with, uh, you know, Carthage must be destroyed. And so eventually Carthage is just wiped out, like just, just full-blown genocide. But it all re- relates back to this Masinissa who, for some reason, you know, you know, gets the, the, you know this woman killed, her father killed, gets her, her 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 native country destroyed, but somehow thinks that he's, you know, in his right mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, but I, but I list him because he's a lesson, a cautionary tale to what we as a people uh, have to avoid, have to have to worry about, have to have to have to have to have to be aware of the fact that even like like the fact that these Eurasians don't. Like, like that, you you can't win by being with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like Masinissa becomes a like he's a loser, effectively. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he 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 caused a downfall of worldwide. You know what I'm saying? Right. All all for nothing. Right. Right. You know, so it's like he he was one of the examples. Uh. uh sh- yeah, you know, he's one of the he's one of the more negative examples, but but I, I included negative and positive, so that we can learn something from it. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I mean the other examples obviously would be Pianke, uh, uh, you know, Taharka, uh, Shaka Zulu is is another one of those negative examples. But but Dati Bokman, uh, Desaline, you know, so, so on and so forth. But then uh, as far as the Queen Mothers, you know. Uh, we have uh, we have oh Hat ha- She was one of more of the negative examples. Uh, Kandake, uh, and then we have uh, Ames Nefertari, Dahia Al Kahina, and Dahia Al Kahina is a really interesting example too, in the sense of we like like like, like, like why Islam? Because Islam comes in uh, around a, around a certain you know century, and it's it. it takes over North Africa. Yeah. And then, you know, you have the Moors go up into uh, Europe, you know, like I said, the Iberian Peninsula, you know, so the Moors would be Africans, but also, you know, Arabs, you know, different, a different Asian group going up into uh, Europe, right? But the only question is, why do they, why did they first go west and then north? Why didn't they go south originally? You right. know? Right, and, and the reality is that it's Dahia Al Kahina, who stood at the, uh, stood up and and fought these you know Arab invaders, these Asian invaders, and pushed them northward. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, and that, that's something that we have to remember too that these individuals, you know, leading armies, you know, lead you know in war, like change the course of human history, you know. Masinissa changed the course of history, human history. You know, Rome wouldn't be what it is. You know, ancient Rome wouldn't be what it is today if it lost against Carthage. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Black power wouldn't be what it is today if Carthage won that war. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then the same with Dahia Al Kahina. If if the uh, if the Muslims invaded and took over, it went south. The history of Africa wouldn't be what it is today. But 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 you have. These individuals, leading armies, you know, these kings, these queen mothers, and that's something that we have to realize that a king 
and the queen mother, they, they have armies, you know, but it's these wars, it's these armies, it's these warriors that are changing the course of human history. And it's like, we as a people, if we're interested in changing the course of human history, we have to be those warriors. Right. You know, we have to be those, uh, you know, warrior queen mothers or, or, or warrior kings. With with uh, with you bringing up Islam, that made me think about uh, Walter Rodney. Walter Rodney was a, a Guyanese historian mm-hmm. and author. And he was the first person I ever heard push the idea that said that the real the the, the real uh, worst enslavement of Africans came from the Muslims. And that's what broke things down that gave way for the European transatlantic slavery. Mm-hmm. Now, I find it interesting that our people... We hold on to religion. I think that's because of, in our DNA, we were always spiritual people. Yeah. Um, but I, I find it interesting that our people either uh, they practice Christianity or they practice Islam, both of which were used as tools to enslave. Exactly. What are your thoughts on the present-day black person who's still adhering to these religions that clearly played a role in where you are today, where we are today. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's like you said, it's, it's about we as a people being spiritual, but not knowing where to go for that spirituality, if you will, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and the thing is like the white, you know, white people's propaganda is, 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 powerful in that sense you know so it's it's uh like, like i said you know why people have these things have these propaganda to portray themselves in such a way that you know you wouldn't know that you're at war or you wouldn't know to be at war with them you know now uh, now so, uh, so, oh, hold on a second are we including the arabs as white people just to be clear yeah everybody who's non-african okay is is white or okay. you're raised, right. you know? Okay. But 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 and, and in fact, you know, the, the, the Arabs refer to themselves as whites. They do. You know? Mm-hmm. Particularly when it comes to, you know, us as a people. Yes. You know, black people. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's uh you know and and and, and, and once upon a time because uh, I, I know like one of the books that they have is uh you know Ibn Batuta uh, goes to Africa and uh and he would say that there are some places in Africa that he wouldn't travel. He he was considered he was considered one of the like the second most traveled person in history, or, or Eurasian history, whatever. Right. Okay. And he's considered the second most traveled person, and and the thing is that he said that there's certain places that would kill white people on sight. He's referring to himself, you know. Mm. But 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 on that note, it's. Uh, you know, the religion is just there to make white people seem divine. Right. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, uh, I, I believe Raskas said it, you know, you know, Michelangelo put the, uh, you know, you know, painted, you know, Jesus to look a certain way. So, so you put white people closer to Jesus, you know, but it's the same way, uh, you know, Islam, you know, if you have uh, some, if you have a, a non, a non-black or an, a, a non-African quote unquote prophet, you know that means that, you know, this high, you know, the, the higher being, if you will, you know, communicated with, you know, a non-African person. Yes. You know, so that means what? That 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 even the, you know, the highest being in the in the universe, if you will, decided uh, that non-African people are are, are better spokespeople, uh, or, or, or 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 closer to that. You know. Yeah. So, but, 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 and, and a lot of it also is, you know, a lot of, a lot of, like a lot of the religion, uh, is, is just, it's just a bunch of, you know, you know, nonsense, but, 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 but I tried, I tried to push, I try to point people towards where they can read more in depth about it, you know, and that was with, uh, Adri Raffle and his, his, his book called Cuckoo Tum Tum, where he kind of goes into, what these names mean, you know, Muhammad being 
Muhap Met, you know, basically just a reference to uh, one of like the Nile, the Nile River, right? And 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 that whole religion just 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 being a perversion of spirituality, you know, like I said, geared toward making white people seem divine, right? You know, right? So it's like, uh, so w- when we as a people look at it today. We don't, we're not looking at it from the context of, like, when we don't look at it, like I said, if we don't have a war consciousness, we can't see what it is. But at the same time, it's like, uh, it is that we're, at, you know, it, it is just a war, it's just, it's just a war tactic that white people are using to confuse us. Yes. You know, to deceive us. But, 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 but we as a people, if we, we continue down that road, it's, it's just, it's just it's it's only because we haven't, you know, we don't have we we haven't gone past that stage of consciousness, and that that's why I said you know we have to we have to lead our people up, you know, through the stages, you know, because the white man wants us to be Ascari. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. Because if if we are soldiers, if we are his soldiers, you know, he doesn't need to fight. You know, what do you need to fight? Like why? Did, like like the white man does not look at your blood, and my blood, or or or, or his blood, and, and your blood is equal. Right. You know. Right. So 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 if if you know it's like if 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 uh, like he doesn't want it to like he's okay with you spilling your blood. He's not okay with him spilling his blood. He's okay with you. You know. You know. So it's like if there's a way to for you to spill your blood without him spilling his blood. He's all for it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. uh, Oni, I want you to hold that thought. Let me have a station break, and we'll be right back to discuss this further, okay? Hold that thought. Yes, sir. You are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAC Radio. Uh, Welcome back to the podcast. We're talking to the author of the book, The Pro-Black Compendium. Brother's name is Oni. And right now we're talking about where we left off. We were talking about soldiers for white supremacy and or white inferiority. Um, what what I've noticed in recent years, especially when we talk about this idea of propaganda and how propaganda is used as a warfare tool against us, we see a lot of black folks are soldiers in the media. For white supremacy, I could point to your Stephen A. Smiths. I could point to your Larry Elders, your Jesse Petersons, your Tommy Sotomayors. Your, you know, the list is kind of long at this point. Um, yeah. Stacy Dash and the like. And these people, you know, nowadays we use the word coon to describe mm-hmm. them, but essentially, I, I like how you're putting it. They are soldiers for white supremacy. They will spill their blood. This includes uh, guys like Jason Whitlock. They will spill their blood if they have to, to fight for master. Um, So you have guys who would critique uh, Colin Kaepernick, for example, for protesting. Mm -hmm. But the white folks who are around will play dumb and just look on at these black folks denouncing Colin Kaepernick, just to use Colin Kaepernick as an example. So I, I think... I think you've really touched on something important here, that these folks are just Ascari. They're just soldiers of white supremacy. And I did a podcast a little while ago talking about the Haitian Revolution Mm. and talking about how the Haitians were able to win in part because they identified their enemies. I think black folks today have a big issue with identifying their enemies. They see a black face and they think we're all one. But we actually have a lot of black faces willing to die for white faces. And um, I I was referring back to the Haitian Revolution where Haitians were able to identify their enemies. And they realized that some of their enemies were fellow black people and they took them out. It wasn't just white folks. It was black folks as well who were the enemies, and they took those out. So we definitely, in this time, we need to come to a point where we can identify our enemies who are within our ranks, who look like us, and take them out. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing, too. It's like, 
well, that, that's that's that, that's the that's that's the that's the thing, right there too, you know. Because like I said, you know, one of the troubles with the uh, like like one of the things I want to do is I want us to also understand like who the Oscari are, right. you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like because because unfortunately this white people are I mean I mean it goes back to one time I was sitting down in a uh, one of these high schools and a principal was. Uh, relating a, a story he was talking about. He said uh, he, he was watching uh, the Frankenstein movie, you know? And uh, and so Frankenstein is the name of the uh, uh, the scientist. But then, you know, he, he but basically the, the scientist makes this monster. Mm-hmm. This monster goes around, terrorizes the people. Eventually the people corner him and I guess kill him, burn him or whatever, right? Free to go. And make another monster. Yeah, you know, they kill the Frankenstein monster. They leave the they leave you know the, the scientist alone, so the scientist can create another Frankenstein monster, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things with our people is that you know, whereas there are some Ascari that obviously need to go, you know, there's mm-hmm. also the reality that this white man is churning out a lot of Ascari. True, you know, a lot of black people who don't like, like, like who are not necessarily who, who don't necessarily know better in the sense of this let, let's be real power is uh you know let's say a weak definition would be the ability to influence other people right mm-hmm. what we do when we are like, like, like we have to be uh critical thinkers in the sense of this that what we do, what people do when they are in power and when they're out of power, are two different things. You know, right? So to say that what the white man does when he's in power is he, he is is this society that we have right here. You know, mm-hmm. but and 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 because he's in power, and we are out of power, if you will, right? A lot of people will resort to doing things that are unbecoming, if you will. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. like for instance, a lot of our people work for white people. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they have they have the power to decide whether or not we will eat. You know, they tell us, "Hey, look, if you want food, you have to pay for it." And in order to pay for it, right? so a lot of us are willing to do. You know, and then a lot of times they underpay us. So that's why you have. A lot of black people doing less than savory work, right. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of black women would sell their bodies, mm-hmm. or, or a lot of black men would, uh, you, you know, go into a mine, you know, with explosives and, and not come out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But 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 a large part of it is, you know, pretty much colonial, what we do out of power. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's hard to judge a people who are out of power. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, not to say that when we have power, when we have that organization, and we have all that, if they mess up and do something, you know, they can't be punished, if you will. But but as it stands, this white person is the is the scientist. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's the scientist that has to be taken out because the reality is that you could take out all the monsters. If the scientist keeps making these monsters, again, we go back to this whole idea where this white man is okay with you spilling blood as long as it's not his. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? The reality is that, and that's why I like to use the, you know, when we talk about war, I like to use the word, you know, like when we talk about enemies, I like to say that's the Eurasian. You get what I'm saying? Right. These, these, these Ascari, if you will, are, are traitors, sure. And there's, there's certain ways to deal with traitors. But, but as far as like an enemy, you know, it's these Eurasian people. And they've always been our enemies. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? Uh, th- th- they've always been our enemies. So it's like, we, we weren't necessarily as conscious as we are today. You get what I'm saying? And then it becomes who decides where, where the best consciousness is. You know, I mean, not, not where the best consciousness is, but who decides whether you made the cut or not. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because it could have, because if we implemented this system uh, let's say ten years ago, right? We don't know where we would have been, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and would it have been worth it? 
You get what I'm saying? Right. We have to, and, and it also goes back to what uh, Marcus Garvey said. He said, you can't hold people accountable for something you've not taught them. You know? So we as a people, we have to get into positions of power. And then in those positions of power, we have to see whether or not these African people are truly, uh, you know, you know, are truly, you know, spirits of, uh, let's say, esfet, you know, spirits of chaos. Or if they were just being chaotic because of the, 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 the environment. So let me interject here. Um, I, I think you're touching on a good clarification. There are those who, I want to use the, the colloquial term that's being used now. There are those who are coons due to ignorance. And there's those who know better and are being traitors to their people. And I think most people today can identify the ones who are doing it intentionally. Like when I bring up Stephen A. Smith or Jason Whitlock or whoever in in the media, those are people who I'm pretty sure know better Mm. versus some of our people whose head is in the bubble, who live around the corner, who are just, you know... Uh, some of our, our, our youth who are, say, college students who they don't know any better. They're just kind of repeating the company, the white company line. So mm. so I, I think you're correct, then, and, I, and I, I'm actually very appreciative of that distinction that you're making there, that you're right. There are some of us who never were taught, and so they do the work of white supremacy, white inferiority complex, But there are those of us who, I mean, you do acknowledge that there are those of us who know better, but they do it for financial gain or what have you, thinking that they'll be saved by white society. Well, that's the thing, though. It's like, that's what what I mean, because that's why I say it's uh, one of the lower stages of consciousness, because the thing with that is that... It really comes down to what are like who is if you if the war like it's 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 war right. it's warfare right yeah. but mm-hmm. if but but you don't see like like I said one of the things you don't see is African people waging war you get what I'm saying so it's like you can't like it's hard for us to say what side these people are on when the war is going on if they don't even see. The, if, if there's no other war, if there's no war going on per se, right? You know what I'm saying? One of one of the taglines I have, one of the quotes I have is, uh, "An African war without an African army is an African genocide." Mm-hmm. Right? Right. So what we have is this: we have a war going on, but we don't have an army, right? And in not having an army, we have a genocide going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's like if you take out one or two, if you take out all of the. Uh, the reality is that all of the, uh, the, the 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 big name Ascari that we know of, right, or or, or you know, whatever we want to call them, mm-hmm. all of them can be replaced by this white man. Right. That nothing special about them. Right. Nothing special about their consciousness. Nothing more devious about their consciousness. They are handpicked by white people, but they can easily be picked. You know. Mm-hmm. And so it's like that's why that, that's what I that's what I meant by the. You know the the Frankenstein, the Frankenstein monster. Yeah, is the reality is that Frankenstein could easily recreate Frankenstein, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the the monster. He could easily recreate the monster. Right. And 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 because of that, it's like that is what they want. The the reality is that this Ascari, uh, with 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 with, with few exception, uh, isn't necessarily. Like 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 like, like, the, like again, the enemy like 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 the spirit of disorder is the white person, right? Right. But and 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 some people would say yes, there are some some black people with spirits of disorder. But again, it's very difficult to tell who it is. Like like because some of us, cause some of them are just uh, taking advantage, like just taking advantage of the situation, and that's a horrible thing to do. But again, you know, the other option isn't there. There's no army for them to join. Mm. There's no there's no Pan African army for them to join. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or, 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 or 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 the Pan African armies are not getting the publicity that they need. You right, know, right? So it's like 
you know, until, uh, you know, we have to, we have to, you know, to, to, in order to determine who's a trader, like a real genuine trader, you know, you have to be organized. You have to get your army together, you know, and then you can't make that judgment before the army's, you know, outside of the army's presence, you know, okay. the army has to make that judgment, but the army, the army needs to be there. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I'm I, following you 100%. It's a good point. We we do, in fact, need to have that apparatus, that, that fight back apparatus, and then we'll really know who the... Then, in the face of actually having the ability to fight back, we could then tell who really is the enemy uh, or, or the traitor, right? Yeah. If, they, if they refuse Cause, cause to... Because, like, another example, like, what... One of the clearest examples I know of, of a, of a race trader, if you will, would be uh, Al Sharpton, right? Oh, because Al Sharpton used to be a part of an uh, organization uh, called the uh, UAM, and he was essentially the president of the organization. And it was one of those really, uh, like, knowledgeable, like, a lot of really knowledgeable, a lot of astute people would come in and, and, and speak wisdom mm-hmm. and knowledge you know, at that organization, he was sitting there present, soaking up that information, you know, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it, 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 it behooves us, you know, outside, like it behooves us to say, who is going to uh, pay Al Sharpton uh, if, you know, let's say if he were loyal to African people, who's going to pay him? Right. You know what I mean? Where is our apparatus to uh, pay him? And 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 then, and then, Who's gonna protect him from uh, uh, white people? Say white if, if white people want to do him uh, huh, huh. wrong, mm-hmm. you know. In fact, I, I, in fact, I, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I believe like he was stabbed. Uh, yes, he was. Yes. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, you know, we have to, we have to get that power, and uh, you know, you know, we have to get that the apparatus of of, of civilization, of, of nationhood. Uh, you know, we have to get that pan-African nationalism together. And and when we have that together, that's when we could say who's a traitor. Because even regarding, like, even regarding Al Sharpton, who are, who's obviously a, a, a race traitor, right? Uh, you know, who obviously needs millions of dollars. You know, he just wants millions of dollars and he would sell, you know, his own parents down the river for it. I mean, I don't want to say all that, but, you know. Yes, he would, uh, but yes, go ahead. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not, you know, but 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 the whole thing is that even regarding that, it's like we have to still see at the end of the day who's in power and who's not in power. And and the reality is that, you know, what uh you know, it goes back to I, I think a, a discussion, one of the things I, I picked up um Du Bois. Uh Du Bois' aunt would uh like Du Bois would always go in on Booker T Washington. Yes. You know, go in, man, that guy is just Blah 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 blah, right? And his aunt would tell him, "Don't be so hard on him. You've never had the uh, whip. Like you've never been whipped." Mm-hmm. You, know, he, you know, his aunt would tell the boys, "You've never been whipped." And and the reality is that what a uh, people who are being whipped, like how they cope with it, you know, it 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 becomes it behooves us to it behooves us to be too critical without, you know. Lending to them the alternative, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it's mm-hmm. like it's like I used to be on the, you know, I used to I used to talk to people, you know, I used to, you know, like, like I said, I, I was an, I'm an organizer, and so I, I I would sometimes try to recruit people off the streets, right? Mm-hmm. And one brother, I was pointing out, hey, look, we could boycott this one economic center over here, right? We could boycott this area right here, and you know, because there's millions of dollars going to that area every day, right? Millions of black dollars going to that area every day, and he looked at me and said, "How how would we eat?" Hmm. I, as to say that if you don't put an alternative, like mm-hmm. if you don't if you don't have a black, like you can't, I can't tell people don't buy your groceries from this store if I don't have a grocery store for them to go to. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And so it's like you know, as much as these you know these these big heads are 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 saying what they're saying, it's like. If I can't, uh, if we're not even offering to 
keep them alive. You know, the bare minimum. Yeah. And not not just the bare minimum, but if we're not even, but we're not even offering a lot of us times we're not even offering the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. It becomes how can we say uh, what they're doing? You know, particularly where their consciousness is. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they don't like 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 a lot. Most people don't know the history of black people. Don't know who we are. Right. You know they they don't know the history of white people. They only know what white people are telling them, which isn't and white people. You know, are you know white people have a forked tongue? You know. Yes. Uh, you know, you know. How do you know if a white person is lying? You know, if his mouth is moving. Once right? he's speaking, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you know, like they only know what white people are telling them. So it's like, I, I, you know, I I prefer for us as a people to focus on, you know, getting these white people, right? And I'm not saying, hey. Let's not get these, 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 you know. Let's not get those, you know, notable traders. But, but that's also something that has to be decided by the people who are doing the action. Who no, are doing the action. Well, you, you, doing, in, you know? in, in this broadcast, you've you've made a strong point here that I have heard others talk about in the past, and I did agree with them then, as I am agreeing with you now. That um, if you don't offer the, an alternative, and yeah. these white folks are offering them not only an alternative but a come up too exactly um the chances are they will do the work they will be soldiers for white inferiority complex so yeah you you make a good point um before we go i want to turn to something else i want to turn to um the idea of preparing people's minds and in your book the pro black compendium you you get to a section where you talk about um the ten books for a book club now I mentioned to you earlier in this broadcast that I initiated a book club I got a very low turnout as far as uh people actually getting the books and reading them and i I now intend to bring it back starting with your book um well in addition to your book the pro black compendium. What 10 books do you suggest our brothers and sisters read, those who are in the know and those who aren't in the know, or what it is to be black, what it is to be African, what it is to be pro-black? What are some of those books that you suggest? Okay, so uh, like I said, in, in the, I mean, I could, I could read from the pro-black compendium. Uh, but is that what you want me to do? You want me to read the books in the pro-black compendium? I mean, yeah, you could tell us, but what you listed in the pro black compendium, or you could just tell us what you feel are some of the best books for the knowledgeable and the non knowledgeable to read. Yeah. So, so in the pro black compendium, I uh, I list you know ten books, but I also explain to people. I mean, I also rate them on like a scale I made. You know, a scale of how easy how easy they are to read. What's the direction they can provide for you? And uh, what's the scope of the book? You know, like how 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 far reaching do these books have? So one of the books that I said was easy, uh, but doesn't have too much direction, uh, has a lot of scope. Is Wonderful Ethiopians of the Kushite Empire? You know, by Drusilla Dungey Houston, and that's it's one of the like it's really a classic. You know, it's one of the best books. If anybody wants to know about what it was like to be an African people. Uh, you know, in power, you know, this is the book to read. You know, okay. uh, it goes into, you know, who we are as an African people and and like what we built and what we build and what we can build. And 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 it's like it relates to you how like like let's say the, the Arabian Nights, the story of Aladdin and the magical lamp and the and the and the, 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 the flying carpet. Those are st- those are stories that are ancient in the Arab world. Uh, but they were of, like, they're written by African writers, mm. you see, uh, of the ancient world, right? So it's like, and then, and then of course, like, you know, like I said, the chickens that could be massaged to produce more eggs than they naturally would, the silks that are uh, more elaborate and more and, and more more refined than than they are produced today, you know, or or, or, or all that is it, 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 it relates to those kind of things, 
in in that book. Right? It, it relates to those kind of things in that book. So it's like it's definitely one of those books that I would recommend not just to read, but also to be like a voiceover for a documentary that 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 we produce. And and just on a side note, uh, I review films also. Okay. But the films are not necessarily as highly rated as the books. Okay. Only because you know for some reason our our films you know, fall short to our books. Right, right. One is obviously Blueprint for Black Power, but I don't say that book's easy to read because it's over 900 pages, right? Mm. Or nearly 900 pages, right? Okay. Uh, another one is Destruction of Black Civilization, uh, uh, which, which is, you know, uh, I, I believe Irritated Genie says it's uh, the Black Bible, right? Uh, but, I mean, obviously you don't want to use the Bible term. But, but uh, <laughs> other one is Zubiri in the Moons of Ma'ah. That's another. That's another, that's the other book I wrote, and I recommend that like highly. Uh, then uh, the teachings of Patahotep is a really short book, a uh, really tiny book, but it's very powerful in in terms of you know informing us. But only only trouble with that book is that we don't have a translation for ourselves, okay. right? Uh, uh, we don't necessarily well, like 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 I think I believe Asa Hilliard released an edition of the book but i think he says that he uh he just took some of the translations that were already out there uh you know by you know the eurasians and uh and put it whatever okay. another one obviously is 2000 seasons by ai arma uh that's a really that's a it's, a, it's not it's 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 a hard read to it's a it's, it's hard to read through but it's a good book um race first by tony martin is a book that uh Marimba Ani told me and a group of uh, people I was organizing, uh, she told us to start a book club. And she said to start with that book, Race First by Tony Martin. And it's basically like an in-depth look at uh, Marcus Garvey mm. and Marcus Garvey's, uh, you know, successes and, and, and failures, if you will. But, 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 but particularly who he was, what he did, how he thought. All of that is in this book, Race First. Uh, Stolen Legacy is another great book. You are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAC Radio. Tell us um, where we can find your books and where we can find you on social media if you have it. Okay, so uh, my books are available on CreateSpace. Uh, so, so CreateSpace is uh I, I guess an amazon company and uh and and, and I, I i did that because it's uh what was it i asked baruti uh because baruti wrote a book on self-publishing and and when i asked him about it i spoke to him about it uh no i emailed him about it and he uh he shared with me that using create space is uh one of the one of the options that 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 i should look into so okay. So the Pro Black Compendium is on uh, Create Space. Uh, you just have to click on Store in the search. You know, mm-hmm. search for Store, and then search the Pro Black Compendium, or you could even search my name, and 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 you could uh, pull it up. You can pull up both of my books, right? Well, the Pro Black Compendium would be uh, at www.createspace.com slash seven five one three two three five, right? And uh, the Beery and the Maroons of Ma'a will be found at uh, you know, createspace.com slash 7214395. Okay. Right. But, 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 the, but the real thing is that if you search the Pro Black Compendium space, uh, you know, you can pick up the book. And, and, and I'm sure you can also pick it up on Amazon. But as far as I know, that... They take out more royalties. Uh, okay. <laughs> if they uh, if so, they you Amazon. you prefer not you prefer them not purchasing through Amazon, correct? Well, I mean, if they go to, if they have to purchase through Amazon, they might you know. Okay. But but I would prefer Create Space. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what about social media? Are you on any social media? I'm on. Uh, well, I have my website, uh, African Blood Siblings dot WordPress dot com. I'm also on a uh, Tumblr. Uh, Onitase, uh, O-N-I-T-A-S-E-T, and also on Twitter, 
uh, the same name, O-N-I-T-A-S-E-T. Cool. Thank you. So, so uh, you know, the, those are the two ways to contact me, communicate with me, or just see what I'm posting. Okay. So that's great. So for all of you guys listening who are regular listeners of the Bitter Medicine Podcast, please support the brother uh, by purchasing his works and going to his website and social media. Uh, the last thing I want to say to you is, can you uh, promise to appear again for us on the podcast? We think you have a lot of good information that the people need to hear. Would you consider that? Oh, yes, absolutely. This was a pleasure for, my, this was a pleasure for me. Great. And, and, uh, and, and it's always good to connect with an uh, intelligent brother, you know? Yeah, so we, we, we should stay in contact. Also, I would like you to consider perhaps even uh, hosting your own podcast on the KWAZ radio network and being a blogger for us at Bitter Medicine Podcast, a, a guest blogger. So please keep those things in mind. We could talk about this further uh, after, the, after the podcast is done, but uh, it would be good to have a voice like yours, a knowledge like yours, doing a regular weekly show and or weekly uh, blog if you if you you know so decide to so please keep that in mind for us okay all right okay so everyone this has been the bitter medicine podcast thanks for listening until next time uh, be safe be black thanks for listening to the bitter medicine podcast with your host koku if you like what you just heard we hope you pass along our web address, bittermedicineblogs.com, to your friends and colleagues and share our show to all your social media. Be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts. This has been a KWAZ radio production. Join us next time for another session of the Beta Medicine Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at Beta Medicine Show, Twitter, Beta Meds, Tumblr, Bitter Meds, Instagram, Bitter Medicine.